Hello and welcome to Europa. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationeers. I thought today rather than doing a technical build on something we might just go to a different base, we'll go to Europa and have a look at how you may do things a little bit differently when you have a lot of extreme cold to deal with. So a couple of things we do. The first first big one I'd say is in to do with power. Uh, number one would be don't build down here. We build up high. The higher you're up, you're not going to be blocked by the, the shadow of the mountains, and you just get a bit of bit of an earlier exposure to sunlight up on the top there. So let's go up there. So first up, we'll scoot around the outside of the base. Now you'll notice we have some of the solar panels are on the roof, and some of the solar panels are on the wall. Because the solar panels are on different orientations, I've had to set up a separate solar tracking circuit. So this one's controlling the vertical one, the ones on the wall, with the sensor on the wall. Now I've got other doth the circuit controlling the ones that are on the floor, with another sensor on the floor. Now we have big solar, big radiator panels on the side. Now this one is for actually cooling the base. You so say it's freezing cold, why would I need such a big radiator to cool the base? Well, there's more to cooling the base than just keeping the rooms cool. But we'll get to that later. Ah, of course, our trading platform, so we do a bit of online shopping. We've got our storage tank. Storage tank is outside, so it is an insulated tank. And I have another radiator up here for cooling down the furnace. That's about all there is on the outside. So as we come inside, we'll just head straight up to the main floor. Now, one of the most critical areas in the base there is our atmospheric slab. Now, I do have this. We're using the same atmospheric setup as we did on Mars, but on this time, we've got it inside because we actually, I wanted to actually equalize temperature with the room before I actually use the gas to pressurize the base because our only source of gas is from outside in the atmosphere, which is very cold, or overflow from the furnace, which is very hot. So uh, if we do start pumping very hot or very cold gas into the base, we're going to ruin our temperature control very quickly. So just being able to bring it up to temperature before we use it just makes, makes the heating and cooling just a little bit easier. Now seeing as we are actually pumping in hot and cold gases into there and wanting them to, to equalise with the room, this room can get rather hot or rather cold. So we've got a fairly decent sized heater in. There's only two panels here, but we've got the extreme cold from the big radiator we had outside and the extreme hot in the pink pipe that comes straight from our waste tank on our furnace. And just the two panels is plenty enough to keep things going here. And as is an added protection on this, while we're still using the same same code for the for the uh, filters, I've added an extra couple of lines there. It's actually a suggestion on the Steam Workshop there that add some temperature control on it. So I've added in a couple of extra lines that will allow this to take in gases if they're very cold until that temp until the temp pressure and the temperature in the tank gets down to freezing to zero. Once this gets down to zero, it will not suck in any more gas until the room has warmed that gas up a bit. Now another thing I do have as sort of a safety in these bases is you, something does go wrong. You don't want to lose your entire base. So I have my airlocks that I originally built when I first started building the place. This was one of the first rooms I built. This was an airlock into a, an un, unfinished part of the base. Now as the airlock is still here, the panel, the doors, the vents, they are all still here. At the moment, I have a chip in the wall, uh, IC10 circuit in the wall, which has actually disabled this. If it notices a difference between the two rooms, between the inside sensor, and now the sensors on either side of the room, if there's a big difference in temperature or pressure, it will reactivate that airlock. It will shut one of the doors, switch on the console, lock the doors, and it will be an airlock once again. So if anything goes wrong in that room, it will hopefully shut down the, close down that as a bulkhead before it gets to the other side of the room. We'll see this one here has shut down on us. This is normally open but it has recycled back to an airlock for some reason. 
Now we have the green light on here which tells us that the other side is pressurized the same as this room. So it's just telling us all is green. I can now switch off that light. The doors unlock. The panel switches off. I can open up the lock. No longer an airlock until it senses a danger and shuts everything down. Now number two on your essentials list is the battery room of course. When you first start you build a greenhouse you get a temperature controlled pretty quickly just stick your batteries in there. It's an honest way of keeping it done without cheesing the physics. So over here we have my furnace. It is the primary source of heating throughout the base. Now if you want to know how this one's built let's go back and check out my other videos there for building a better furnace. It shows how we can store the waste heat from the from, from the furnace in an overflow tank which will then use that waste heat to reheat the furnace. Uh, and we can also just tap a pipe into that waste tank and run that pipe through the entire base and use it to heat our entire base, which very cheaply and very effectively. In terms, in terms of building this sort of bits here, it's, it's good to have all this hooked up electrically to a single transformer. So just the things that are associated with the furnace all hook up to that transformer. So when I'm not using it, just to save power, because power is precious on Europa, one switch, it's all gone off. Same with my manufacturing. I saw my three printers controlled by the sorters downstairs. One flick, and we're all on. Ooh, potato. Yeah, a bit of fluff on it, but anyway. As we come to the top floor, you find just yeah, it's a bit of a time wasting section I've made. It's pretty much all just decorative. It's got a few just little bedrooms and whatnot. Now you find that you will build things like this, and there's really nothing in there. So you don't want to have to spend a lot of time putting a, a system in to keep maintain the temperature. So you can just put a passive vent on the outside wall, which links just directly to a passive vent on the inside wall. That will essentially link the two rooms and just allow the temperature outside to maintain the temperature in here. Because even though there's nothing in here, if you do close it up, you can sometimes get phantom heat build up in here. And yeah, you suddenly open the door and it's 100 degrees. Not good. Uh, it's not my room. Got no idea who lives there. Uh, shit. Um, never mind. Uh, I got some other crew quarters. That mess hall, and of course the space pod. And of course we have the living room. This is the sunset room. You can sit down and watch the sunset. It's got flowers. Lovely living room. Of course it was my living room. There'd be no flowers. It'd just be a TV and a half-built motorcycle. But that's just me. And a medic station. One time got a bit bored and decided to build this up. Now the ground floor. This is where we came in. We of course have our logistic systems for our printers, which are upstairs. They're all switched off now because I've got the printers switched off. And I have the very practical thing you want on every base. Here's the basketball room. Can we do it? First shot. Yes. Speaking of useless stuff, as soon as I found out that water was rendering, I had to build this. I can't swim in it, but it looks like I can. Once again, we still have heaters. Even down here, this is just a manually controlled valve, but it still works as a heater. Now, the other part of what we got here, and the main reason that we have this huge huge cooling panel on the outside of the building is I have a gas generator which is down there in a tank of water surrounded by radiators that go straight to the outside via a digital valve and it still overheats. Now I have the computer set up to switch the generator off when the temperature gets above 40 degrees and to switch on the cooling when the temperature gets above 20. You can see it's well above 20. The cooling is on as you can see from the valve there. 
and it is still managing to overheat and has to switch off the generator every now and then to do it. Now I know you can just keep punching the generator on every time it switches off but that's kind of cheesing the game engine there and I want to do it honestly so I've put in the cooling system to try and run it and just switch the engine off as need be. There's still enough to keep it a base powered so I'm happy with that. I can't get it to run continuously, maybe I'll have to put in a bigger room and fit even more coolers in there, but it's a lot better than what it was. It's on for longer than it's off at the moment, so that's something. Now one of the things with building in station here is, is building with frames. Now these frames occupy a degree of space. Uh, when you pull apart those frames, it will replace the space the frame has occupied with the atmosphere. It doesn't pick the atmosphere from inside the base though. It will actually pick the atmosphere from outside. So the atmosphere outside is very cold. So if you suddenly come up and put a, uh, a, a block of very cold atmosphere in your base, it's going to cool down your room pretty quickly and ruin your temperature control. So you have to be very careful about pulling apart those frames. So if you're one of these people who likes to run cables through the frames, uh, you'll find yourself in a lot of trouble because you're going to be continually pulling apart frames to run your cables and pipes and it will freeze your base. So a bit of thinking ahead will, will just give you a way to get around that. Now, because on the floor here, we have a floor built out of frames. On the wall, we have a wall built out of frames. So that means that diagonally down, down here, there is a column of frame running along the bottom of that wall which doesn't necessarily need to be there because uh, the frames will still match up and that 45 degree is doesn't ruin the air tightness so if you want to run cables through the through the walls you can actually create a service corridor down there now of all the things I've sort of built in this base the service tunnels that I've built running through the base are one of my favorite parts So if we go down here, we find these little service areas. They're a bit dark. As we go in, we climb in, and we can see all of our pipes and all of our power cables. We've got little health and safety bolts there, so if we do actually stuff something up, we're not ruining the whole base, because these tunnels do tend to link bits of the base. So we have our heater pipe, which is a pink one there, where it just ducks into the corners of the room there, that's where it's ducking between the floor. That's the, this is the floor level with the manufacturing room. Above there's a manufacturing room. Down here is the passage between the generator room on that side, and battery room up the top here. So you can see that's the heater which goes into the passage and into the generator room. The yellow pipe's the waste pipe which comes from those two rooms. You've got our breathable gases coming in here and our main power line coming out from the, the batteries. Underneath here runs underneath our furnace, that's where our hot pipe comes from. Up this end we find the cold pipe comes from our big radiator which was out here. So these pipes can run all through, they run upstairs, there are more heat exchanges up there and they allow me access to the whole base. So if you do want to build service tunnels like this, just a little tip is inside your tunnels, try not to build anything on that join there. You shall notice these pipes which are of things which are inside the room. So you can accidentally lay pipes here. If you've got your spanner, you don't want to accidentally connect a heater line to a fuel line or that will end badly. So I try to avoid putting anything inside the uh, service duct along that little join there. The only times it does get into there is where it's actually joining into the room. This is by no means the best way to do things or the only way to do things. And as they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's just the way I do it. I hope some of that helps you out. As I say, use it as inspiration for things you do. You don't have to follow it exactly. I suppose I haven't explained it too deeply, so you probably won't be able to follow it exactly, but experiment with it, see how you go. Till next time, happy building, see ya.